Hey guys, welcome to The Recap. My name is Drake and I'm so glad you're tuning in with us. Listen, as we wrap up this series, Who Needs God? I've noticed that there are three different kinds of people who don't believe in God. There's simply people who don't believe. There are people who don't believe but want to believe. And there are simply those people who don't want to believe. And so I don't know where you find yourself today, but maybe you fall into one of those three categories. Stick around and let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome to City Church Online. My name is Drake, and I am so glad you're tuning in with us today. We are wrapping up our series, Who Needs God? And I am so pumped and grateful that you're tuning in with us. Now listen, I don't know where you are in, uh, this morning as we have this conversation, but I would love to know what you had for breakfast. So make sure you're using that chat right now. Let us know where you're tuning in and what you had for breakfast. And if it was pretty good, I would love to know how you can send me some of that, okay? Thanks for being here. Listen, you can use the share button if you're on Facebook Live. You can use a little button popping up on uh, the Church Online platform to literally invite someone via text right now to join you. And so we would love to know that you're here. We're glad that you're here, and we would love to connect and serve you in any way that we can. Now, I, I don't know how it's been for you over the last couple of months, but this season, man, it's just been relationally challenging, right? Like, it's just been hard. And so I don't know if you're getting like that, that virtual fatigue. I hope I'm not just this talking head up here, and, and I hope that we're having some encouragement in the process. But in case you didn't know, our groups, our city groups that meet throughout the week, they're starting to come back together in groups of 10 or less in person, and those that are not comfortable are still coming in through Zoom, and so I'm grateful for that. But I, I just want you to know, every week on the front end, our team gets together, and me personally, I do my best to pray over you and really just see you in the room with me. And so I, I just want to help you understand, man, you're not an audience as you tune in here. You're family. And if you're new to City Church and you're tuning in kind of early or for the first time or for the last few weeks, I, I want you to know you are loved, safe, and welcome here, and we would love to help you continue you to get connected. So I just want you to know that I see you, and we see you the best that we can in the season. And so listen, Bella, I see you. Raph, I see you. Albert and Jody, I see you. Colton and Madeline, I see you. Roger, I see you. Elijah, I see you. Gennaro, I see you. Brittany and Dan, I see you. You're wondering how long I'm going to do this. Daniel, I see you in the back because you're actually in the room with me recording. Listen, I know if I didn't give your name, we're going to be here all day if I did that, and so I'm not going to do that to you, but I want you to know we love you and we see you, and we're grateful that you tune in, okay? Hey, I want to give you a quick update. We have this thing called The Recap that's happening a couple of times after our live stream service on Sundays, and it's just an abbreviated service where the message plays, and it's an easy way to continue to share and invite other people into what's going on at City Church and kind of involve them in the conversations. And I just wanted to remind you, and you might not know this, but our heartbeat here at City Church is to help people find their way to God from where they are. And so as we wrap up this series, it's been a tool that was created to help us have conversations for people who maybe have walked away or have stayed away and maybe start to take some steps back toward faith or maybe take steps toward faith for the first time. And so, if, man, if that's you, I hope this has been really helpful to you. And listen, if you're a follower of Jesus, if City Church is your home, I just want to remind you, we carry this mission together. We're family in this. And so I just want you to think right now, just in your heart and mind, pause, breathe in and out, and think about it. Who has God put around you or in your path or in your circle of influence for the purpose of helping them find their way to him from where they are? Who is it that you have the opportunity to simply share a link? I just don't want you to miss the simple opportunity we have in this digital season to share a link, share a message, and then start some dialogue with the people that God has put around you and watch them do something amazing in their hearts and lives. And so you know this and I know this, but I'm going to say it because it's cliche and we're going to remember it, but sharing is, is what? Come on, type it in there. Let me know. Sharing is caring. That's right. And so make sure you do it, okay? Now, as we wrap up this conversation in this series, I'm going to ask you to do something today that's super, super hard. And it's hard for me, and I, I just imagine that it's hard for you. And I'm going to ask you today to be honest. Everybody say, be honest. Be honest. And the reason this is so hard is I'm not just asking you to be honest, but I'm asking you to be honest with yourself. And you know why this is hard is, is because when I do this, I don't know about you, but when I do this, when I take a moment, when I look in the mirror and I do some real self-evaluation and I'm honest with myself, what it normally means is I, I've got to go say sorry to somebody or 
I gotta humble myself, or you know, I gotta go change something. 95% of the time, I gotta go say sorry to Danielle because I said something stupid or did something stu- stupid. And and the reason uh, this is so difficult, and you know this, but but here's why: is that self-deception it always takes us in a bad direction. Self-deception always takes us in a bad direction. So that's why I'm inviting you to be honest today. Because if you're not honest, man, you're not going to get to where you need to be. If you're not honest, you're going to remain stuck where you are. If you're not honest with yourself, then it's, it's going to be a lid to growth. And, and this applies to every area of life. And you know this. Like if you were to think back just on your childhood growing up, I don't know your story, but you know, maybe for you, if you look back at mom and dad and you were to think about it, like, man, if, if mom or dad or, or both of them, if they would have just been honest with themselves, if dad could have just owned up to, if mom could have just been honest with herself about this thing, man, our whole childhood, our whole family dynamic, it would have changed entirely. Or, or, or you know what, maybe you're tuning in and um, um, you know, you're, you, you've been divorced and you're looking back on past relationships and, and you could say, man, if, if I would have just been honest with myself or, or if they would have just been honest with themselves, then we, we would still be married. But you know, it, we, because we never took some time to look in the mirror and say, you know what, I think I'm part of the problem, then, then there were some things that were irreconcilable. And you, sit, you might be tuning in right now and you're like, Drake, what? Why is this important? Why are we, why are we talking? Great. Honesty is the best policy. Thank you so much. Woohoo. Thanks for that nugget. I'm going to tweet it and go take a nap. I, I, don't, I don't know why this is important, what it has to do with faith. Here's why. It's because I hope that the conversation today, if we can be honest with ourselves, it'll open up some doors in conversation that maybe we've not had permission to open until today. And so I'm going to start off with a guy named Thomas Nagel. He wrote a book called Mind and Cosmos. Everybody say Mind and Cosmos. Mind and Cosmos. Pretty easy to say, but the subtitle is where it gets tricky. Here's, here's what the, the book premise is, if you will, why the materialist neo-Darwinian conception of nature is almost certainly false. Holy moly, try to say that three times. You have no idea how many times I practiced that to make sure I could say it right. Okay, now Thomas Nagel writes this book, and he's an atheist, and it's a really helpful book because he's arguing in this book, at least part of it, that atheists and, and scientific people are guilty of the same things that religious people do. And here's what I mean by that. He says, you know, religious people, they have this, like, God of the gaps idea that anytime there's something unexplainable, you know, it's just a God did it, God did it, God did it. We just let God fill in the gaps of anything unexplainable. And he says, listen, the scientific community, man, th- th- we have gaps too, and, and we do the same thing. We, we say natural selection did it, natural selection did it, natural selection did it. And so Thomas Nagel comes along and he says, listen, natural selection, it, it can't explain everything. And one of the things is like, like value, for example, that we talked about for for a couple of weeks ago is, you know, natural selection can't explain why anyone would have inherent value. And as an atheist, Thomas Nagel makes an amazing, profound confession, and an honest confession with himself. And, and here's what he has to say uh, in one of his other books, The Last Word. He says, I want atheism to be true and am made uneasy by the fact that some of the most intelligent and well-informed people I know our religious believers. And Brittany, you're probably on on the other side of this. We've had conversations where you're a biologist and you're living in that world. And as a follower of Jesus, there's this tension of, you know, you're really intelligent, you bring a lot to the table, but the majority of the culture that you're in doesn't believe in God. And so there's this tension. And he's saying that that makes him uneasy. But watch what he continues to say. And this is really unique. He says, it isn't just that I don't believe in God and naturally hope that I'm right in my belief. It's that I hope there is no God. Watch it. I don't want there to be a God. I don't want the universe to be like that. Wow. Do you guys hear what he's saying? He's saying, listen, this conversation is is more than just data. It's it's more than than just, just the facts that I'm presented with. There's also a will and a want connected to this reality. And so I don't know where you're tuning in. I don't know what your spiritual journey looks like. If you've walked away, if you stayed away, if, if you grew up in it, or you're just now being exposed to it for the first time, but maybe you've never given yourself permission to acknowledge this reality that, that maybe, you know, if you, if you were to crack the door open on this conversation, there's some implications that you've been trying to avoid. And, and here, here's what I mean by that. You know, you know that there's a big, big difference in I don't believe it and I don't want 
to believe it. Right? I, I don't believe it normally comes from, you know, something happened. Maybe, you know, for you and your story, something happened along the way that disconnected faith or your, you know, your fact-based questions were met with faith-based answers and you couldn't reconcile some things or, 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 you know, you learned something along the way that discredited faith for you. But there's a big difference between I don't believe and I don't want to believe. Why? Because want has to do with will. And so, so here's my question for you as we enter this conversation. My question is, is did you lose faith or, or did you step away from faith or have you stayed away from faith because of something that you read or something that happened or, or your lack of ability to reconcile some hard things that you've seen in the world and with a good God, things like we've been talking about the last couple of weeks? Or as, as we're having this conversation, did you decide to stop believing or did you decide to step away or did you decide to stay away because faith was simply inconvenient. And then after the fact, did you realize, like, I just stopped believing or faith is inconvenient? Did you realize that those aren't really good arguments for the reasons you don't believe in God? And so then, you know, did you later go and, and get some facts and data to back up your, your stance and your position? Let me ask it a different way. And, and listen, I'm not trying to, like, you know, shoot any bullets or I'm just asking so we can give ourselves some, some permission here, okay? Did you, did your decision to step away or stay away did that decision precede the data that you've collected to support that decision? Just think about it. Did your decision to step away or your decision to stay away, did it precede the data that you collected to support your position and decision? You see, if the issue is I don't believe or if the issue is I used to believer, if the issue is I have never believed, right, there's tons of information to help you continue to have this conversation, to answer the questions that you have. Listen, if you want God to exist, man, there's incredible answers and there's lots of good information that you can seek out on your own to come to that conclusion. But here's the challenge, and I'm just asking you, be honest with yourself. Be on, and not, I'm not asking you to be honest with me or anybody that you're sitting on the couch with. Just be honest with yourself. If you stepped away or you have stayed away because of will, because of want, if, if it's simply a matter of, I just, I don't want it to be true, or I don't want to do something that I don't want to do. And, and can we all be honest? Like, we've all been here to different degrees. Even those of us that are followers of Jesus, we fall into this category at different periods. But here's what I need you to know if, if you find yourself in that category. Information will never be enough. And this is why Anytime you get in an argument or any, anytime someone disagrees with you and you're having conversations specifically related to faith, that, that no matter the credibility of the argument, no matter how, how good or solid or helpful it could be, that the conversation and the ideas, they just bounce off of you. Like they don't even get close. Why? Because you don't want it to be true. So you don't have any desire to hear what they have to say. Blaise Pascal says it in a really good way. He says, people almost invariably arrive at their beliefs not on the basis of proof, but on the basis of what they find attractive. Whoa. Everybody say, whoa. That's a really good point, right? We're all guilty of this. Remove the faith conversation. We're guilty of this in so many levels. Very few of us are on a truth quest. Come on, you know this, right? You don't wake up every day and, and say, man, listen, oh, I just got to find the truth today. Like I'd abandon all of my presuppositions and I'd abandon my worldview if I could just get a hold of the truth, right? That's it's probably not you and it's probably not me. And if that is you, you're a really unique person and I'd love to meet you, but I'm a little intimidated by you already, okay? Like most of us, we're on a happiness quest, aren't we? Right? Give me a worldview, give me a set of thinking, give me some values that are going to make me happy. And, and St. Augustine, he said it this way. He said, we love the truth when it enlightens us. We, we hate the truth when it convicts us. That's why we don't step on the scale as often as we want to, especially now that we're in quarantine, right? We're trying to avoid that truth. Now, think back, like, just, just think about it for a moment. Think back to, like, when you were a kid and you get in an argument with your parents, Here's my question. Were you trying to get to the truth in that argument, or were you just trying to get your way? 
right? When you're arguing, mom, dad, let's just, let's just get to the truth. I just want to know the truth about this situation. And, and all of a sudden, you know, you lost the argument. You're like, oh, wow, mom, dad, I, I apologize. I'm so sorry. I was wrong. You have enlightened me. I'm so glad we found the truth. Said no one ever, right? Why? Because you weren't in it to, to find the truth. You were in it to get your way. And listen, if you won the argument, on the off chance that you actually won the argument, and it was an argument that you probably shouldn't have won, but you won anyway because you were able to talk yourself out of it, or they didn't know some of the details that you conveniently left out, then you walked away and you knew, right? You knew. Or, or man, you know, if you've ever been in an argument with your spouse and, you know, halfway through the argument, you know, you realize a little light goes off and you go, oh, but you don't let your face say that. Just in, in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, they're right. And what do you do? And what do I do? I keep on arguing. Why? Because I'm not in it to get to the truth. I'm in it to win it. Come on, baby. Like, you, you know this about you, and this is definitely true for me as an eight on the Enneagram, but it's about winning. And, and so let's say I win the argument because you know, of, of X, Y, and Z. I, I, I leveraged some language, or I got the last word in, or, or I had a little, you know, a few more facts to throw in there, or you know, her phone died and I had the last word. Woohoo, gotcha. You know, whatever it is, and, and I won the argument. But listen, you know, in the middle of that, you know, you realize they were right, but you kept on pushing. And even if you win, you kind of know in the back of your mind, something, something was, something's not right. And here's, here's what I'm trying to point out. When we won't acknowledge what we suspect to be true, or when we won't look for fear of what we might see, you know, when we're put in positions when we're not going to acknowledge what we suspect to be true, we're not going to acknowledge that we're wrong, we're not going to look for that thing because we're afraid of what we might see, what's operating in the background is, is there's, all I'm trying to help us see is that there's something else in the mix, right? What, what, what it means is that while all of the arguments and all of the information that I put out there to be right, even, even if they are right, it doesn't mean that they're always false for the record. There's something in the background that says there might be something more to this story. And so as we, as we wrap up this conversation and this series, listen, I have no desire to offend you. That's like the last thing I want to do, okay? I'm just trying to give you some permission to maybe like let the glo- like take the gloves off, let the guard down for a minute, and like just be honest with yourself, not even me. You don't have to tell anybody. I'm not asking you to change anything, just giving you some permission. But could it be? Could it be that the real reason that you stepped away or the real reason that you stayed away, it isn't actually the reasons that you give. It, it isn't actually your, your facts and your arguments that you present. Could it be that operating in the background of, of your reasons for, for not believing, there's this idea of want, and it's related to a few of these things. Like, could it be, if there's a God, then I'm guilty, I don't want to be guilty. I do everything I can to avoid shame and guilt. And, 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 man, you know, when we make mistakes, and we love the word mistakes because it kind of takes the edge off, but, you know, when we make a mistake and we hurt somebody else, we'd love to just call it a mistake, put it aside, and move on. But, but you know, there's been some mistakes <laughs> that you've made, and there's definitely some mistakes that I've made, and they're just, they're, they're maybe a little bigger than that word. And, and, you know, to be honest, for me, my biggest mistakes, they've never just involved me. They've always involved someone else, and yours probably have the same, you know, recipe for disaster that, you know, your biggest mistakes, you, you owe somebody, right? Like, you, you took something that now you can't give back. You said something you can't take back. You did something that you wish you could undo, right? It's like, you know, you can't give your kids back what you, what you took away by working and giving yourself to your job in a season. You can't get that season back. You can't, you can't undo the damage early on in your marriage from the words that you said and the things that you did, you can't take back those words. And if we start to crack the door on this, you know, if there's a God conversation, right, it starts to change this whole dialogue, and it, and it honestly gets a little scary, right? Because if there's a God, then, you know, maybe I'm guilty. Like, if I, if I embrace the idea of God, then what I have habitually reduced to a few mistakes in my past, they now become bigger than that. And I don't want that. So I'm going to do my best to avoid it. Or, or maybe one of the things operating in the background is, is that if there's a God, I'm accountable. 
I don't want to be accountable. I don't want to be accountable to you or the government or, the, or, or anybody else. I don't want to be accountable to anyone. And, and we all want to, to play God, right? Like, like we, we don't want to operate in this world of, of being accountable. I want to be autonomous. There's this illusion of autonomy that we operate under, like, I'm not accountable to anyone. And there's this story in, in, in the beginning of the Bible, um, like the whole Adam and Eve thing. I don't know if you're familiar with this and if you believe in it, or, you know, this Garden of Eden situation where God creates humanity, and, and they're, they're perfect, and there's no mistakes or sin or anything in the world. And all of a sudden, humanity looks up, and, and they, they say the very thing we've been wrestling with, who needs God? And Adam looks around and Eve looks around and says, I don't need God and she doesn't need God. And, and that's where the whole idea of being autonomous starts. And there's this illusion of autonomy that we struggle with. And the problem is anytime I operate like I'm not accountable, and you know this, I know this, anytime I do it, it always leads to regret, doesn't it? Like every time I act like I'm not accountable for my actions, it always makes me have regretful decisions that normally end up hurting others and myself. And man, what's, what's terrible, and you, you probably experienced this, you get two unaccountable people together and you put them in a relationship and we call it marriage, right? That thing starts to, it's just a ticking time bomb, right? Like, I'm not accountable to you and I'm autonomous and I'm my own man and I'm going to have my man cave and my man garage and you can't tell me what to do, right? Like, we, we get stuck in these areas and it just blows up and it always leads to regret. And the problem is, if I admit that there's a God, then I've got to submit to God. And we don't like that word at all. Why? I don't want to. I, I, and let me ask you a question. Where does that come from? Why, why is it that we resist the things that are good for us? Why, why is it that we have this pressure? And you know what we do? We live loud and we live fast lives until something happens in life that gets our attention. And so maybe operating in the background is, is, is this issue. Or, man, if there's a God, you know what that might mean? I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. And I definitely don't want to be wrong. Think about it. What is pride? What is that thing in us that doesn't want to admit what we know is true? That halfway through an argument, we want to hang on to it even though we know we're wrong? What is it inside of us that we know in our hearts and our minds that we're wrong, but when it comes to admitting it to anyone else, it's so hard. What is that? You see, humility is always, and you know this, like remove God from the equation, you know this, humility is always the way forward. Humility always makes you bigger. Humility always makes you wiser. Humility always makes you smarter. But man, there's this struggle in our hearts and minds. I don't want to be wrong. And if I admit that there's a God, then what I'm doing is I'm opening myself to some new information. And, and you need to know this, right? That, that admitting that I'm wrong is, is the fastest route to finding out what's right. And so I'm, I'm just trying to open the door a little bit and give us some permission. And so the, the, this big idea, if God, I'm, I'm guilty or I'm accountable or I'm wrong... These all have to do with will and want, but I want you to understand these are not arguments for or against anything. They're just, they're just responses. And, and so this whole idea of having resistance, it, it's not an argument, it's a response. And, and this explains why, if you're in this category, you've developed arguments and, and, and you, you have some ammunition, if you will, to support your stance. But if you'll be honest... Can I, just, can I just ask you right now, I'm not asking you to do anything other than internally, think about this. Is it possible that it could be true that your arguments against God came after your decision not to want God? That all the intellectual ammo that you've collected, that was not first but second after you decided, I don't want there to be a God. And, and so I needed some reasons to support my decision. Why do we do this? Here's why. Because you and I, man, we, we, we didn't want God to be. So we've got to find ways to defend that position. Here's the good news. Is that when we acknowledge that the issue, when we acknowledge that the issue is our resistance, not God's existence, and it opens up an incredible, incredible door. Listen, it's scary 
right? Will I scare, like, because what, what does this mean? And if God, all of these things, and, you know, I'm not sure I'm ready, but, but I, I'm not asking you to do anything with it, but, but just, would you just acknowledge in your own heart and mind that maybe, maybe this is where you find yourself. There's a personal resistance that's the primary issue, not necessarily the existence of God. And I need you to know, listen, listen this is huge. That baby step has profound implications because at the moment that you're willing to acknowledge that the issue is resistance and not existence, then you begin to step into this amazing story and narrative in human history of God pursuing humanity after they broke relationship with him. You see, once you're willing to admit that, that this is maybe closer to the heart of the issue, you step into this stream of humanity that has struggled with the idea of submission, from, uh, submission to God from the very beginning. This is not unique with you, and you're not alone. But man, this tiny baby step opens a door for some really, really amazing things. You see, because if Jesus was correct, if he was correct about God, which there's a lot a lot of evidence that, that he very likely was. And what it means is if there is a God, there's forgiveness. Whoa, you know, th this, you know, sin or mistakes or, you know, whatever you want to call it, whatever you're comfortable calling it, these mistakes that we, that we make, they actually become the platform that God uses to demonstrate his love. Get, don't, don't miss this. Listen, the mistakes and the way that we hurt people, God actually uses that as a platform to communicate his love to us. Check it out. Paul, who was, um, man, he started out as a religious nut. He was kind of against the whole movement of Jesus. Not kind of. He was hardcore against the movement of Jesus, okay? He was killing Christians, leading crusades to shut down the Jesus movement. One day he meets Jesus, becomes a follower of Jesus. His entire life changes, and he writes this, not only for the people he's writing to, but in reflection of what God has done in his life. Watch what he writes. Romans 5, 8, he says this. He says, but God shows his love for us, in that while we were still mistakers, <laughs> right? No, while we were still, well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> well, while we, will, we were still, well, you don't, you don't know what they did to me and how they acted and how they respond. <laughs> while we were still sinners, whoa, Jesus Christ, he died for us. While we were still and I think we just get to this point. Okay, fine. I did it on purpose. I knew it would hurt her. I knew what I said would hurt her, and I said it on purpose. Fine. I, I mean, I'm not going you know, to go tweet about it or put it on the gram, but I did it on purpose. I, I knew that those actions were going to hurt her, and you know, they might have some consequences, but I did it anyway. Okay, fine. I did it anyway, and I did it on purpose. And at the moment that we get there, we can call it whatever you want. We say, man, God uses that to communicate, to demonstrate his love. And, and listen, this is where sometimes it gets weird. People say, man, why, why did Jesus have to die? Like, why all the blood and gore? Like, why not? Why couldn't God just, like, wipe the slate clean and say, hey, you're all forgiven? Why, why the death? And here's why. Because you cannot, and you know this, you cannot have relationship without sacrifice. Right? If, if, if you don't sacrifice for me, I don't, I don't know you love me. If I don't sacrifice for my wife, there's no proof in that love or for my kids, for the relationships that matter. Man, if there's no sacrifice, it's hard to know. And this is amazing, guys. This is the Christian, this is what Jesus came to bring for us to know, that God demonstrated his love for me and for you. And listen, every relationship, it demands sacrifice. In every offense, it, it requires forgiveness. It requires reconciliation. And you see this active in your own relationships. But this is why what Jesus came to bring is the perfect story. Because through Jesus, God demonstrated. He, he showed us the way, both his forgiveness and his reconciliation. And guys, listen, if, if there is a God, man, don't you want that? And in the same vein of thought, man, Jesus teaches us not only is there forgiveness, but if there's God... And there's relationship. He's not out there, but he's also close and personal. Jesus said we can know him as father. Like, think about it. Listen, when you're, if, if, you, if you have kids, when your kids rebel, what's the issue? Is it their actions? Or, or is the relationship broken? 
It's a relationship issue, right? And Jesus is bridging the gap for us in that, to fix the relationship between us and God. And lastly, from Jesus, man, if there's a God, then there's truth. That there's this explanation operating in the background of all these oughts and ought nots that, that govern our reactions and sometimes our actions. Think about it. You know, the oughts that we feel, they don't always govern our actions, but they absolutely govern our reactions. You know, when someone does us wrong or they say something hurtful or do something, right, we immediately become angry and, you know, we have all these you know, ammo to throw back. How, how could you? You shouldn't have done that to me. You shouldn't have said that. Right? Where, where does that come from? And if there's a God, then there's truth. There's morality and a basis for justice. There's a law of nature that, that we get to experience in our hearts that we literally are living in and, and, and watching live out of us every day. And so here's the question. If the question is, who wants God? <laughs> then, man, to some degree, at some point, probably none of us have, have been there, right? But if the question is, who needs God? Then maybe it's all of us. And so my goal today wasn't, make, what wasn't to make you feel guilty and ashamed. It wasn't to offend you by any means. It wasn't to back you into a corner with, with this thought process, but rather it was just to give you permission to be honest with yourself without fear of judgment or shame to open up this door just a little bit to provide you with an opportunity of a baby step that maybe some of the reasons that you've stayed away aren't really the main reasons at all and in all of it and don't miss it God loves you no matter where you are God loves you and he demonstrated, he proved that love for you and me. And it's the motivation to enter into that relationship and to stay in that relationship. And so I don't know what your next step might be today. But maybe, you know, as we crack that door open a little bit, you're on the other side. You're like, Drake, I'm ready to open the door. Maybe right now you'd be willing to say in your own heart and mind, I, I think I need God. And man, the beautiful news, guys, is if that's you today, you can pray that exact prayer. God, I need you. God, I believe that Jesus died for me and that proved your love for me. I believe he rose again and forgiveness is available. God, I want a relationship with you. And however you would pray that on your own heart and mind today, I want you to have confidence today that God hears your prayer, forgiveness is available, and you can have that new relationship with him starting today. And maybe you're on the other side of this and the door cracked open a little bit and, you know, you're like, Drake, I don't know, man, I, I, I want to talk more. No matter where you find yourself, you could text the word follow to the number on the screen. If you made a decision to follow Jesus or you have more questions, text that word follow. Someone from our team is going to follow up with you. You know, maybe you want to be more involved in City Church. Maybe you need community around you. Maybe you want to serve and give back in this time. You can text the word new to the number on the screen, that same number, and someone from our team is going to help you get connected and empowered and have people around you who love you and are going to walk through life with you. And you know what? Maybe there's someone that you need to love, someone that you need to serve, someone that you need to invite, and, and maybe you'd like to join, for us to join you in prayer over those opportunities, and you can engage through prayer on the online platform as well. We would love to pray alongside you. I don't know where you're tuning in, but I want you to know I'm so glad you did. And what I want to do right now is I'm going to pray for you and I as we close out this service. God, thank you so much for my friends who've taken the time to tune in. Thank you for allowing us to be honest with ourselves just for a moment, to crack the door, to shed a little bit of light to, to see that, man, you love us, and you love us beyond measure. And it's humbling and it's overwhelming. And I man, I don't know where our hearts and our minds are, are arriving today in this, but I pray that you would use this conversation to, to open it up just a little bit more and help us take a baby step towards you because you already took a giant leap toward us. And for my friends on the other side of this conversation who know in their hearts and minds that they're ready to say, I 
need God. Would you give them confidence to do it today? And can we celebrate with them in that decision and watch you do only what you can do in our lives? And for those of us that are already in your family, those of us who have a relationship with you, man, would you fill our hearts with purpose and with passion and with love to serve those around us? Put names of, and, and, and faces on our hearts and minds so that we can engage and serve them today. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to The Recap. It was great to have you. Listen, if we can help you take some next steps or help you get connected, you can text the word NEW to the number on your screen. Or listen, if you made a decision to follow Jesus or you'd like to talk more about that, you can also text the word FOLLOW to the same number on your screen, and we'd be happy to help you in any way that we can. See you next time.